In other words, this mission trip to the Gentile country of Tyre, or region, I should say, of Tyre and Sidon, shatters the idea of the Messiah only as a Messiah only for the Jews. But Jesus has come for the world. Where else do we hear that? John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever, whoever believes, whoever believes, I have eternal life. Jesus has come as an antidote. In the text this morning, what does Jesus do? Uh, he, he casts out a, a demon from, from a, a woman's daughter, a Syrophoenician, I mean, that breaks the mold of, of who he came to serve and, and who God cares for and loves and, and is concerned about. But, but he also opened the ears of the deaf man and, and allowed him to speak. And in that, you know, I, I, it's more than, it, there's, so, there's a lot of symbol in, in Jesus' miracles. Matter of fact, when John writes his gospel, he uses all of these miracles as symbols. And symbol not only does what it does, but it points to something greater, something bigger, something larger. And in this, the opening of the ears is, is more than just this man being able to hear words. But it's, it's a symbol that Jesus has come to unstop our ears, that we can hear the word of God. That we can now begin to, to know who this God is that we knew through prophets of old, but now have the witness of his Son, the very image of God, God in flesh walking among us. And we can now hear for, for sure and with confidence what God wants from us, how he wants us to live, how he wants us to respond. It's the antidote to the sickness of the world because now our ears are unplugged and we can truly understand what God wants from us. And we can be transformed by those words. We're told in Genesis that God created by speaking the word. He spoke into existence. That also works in our lives. As the gospel message is spoken into us by God himself. As the Holy Spirit speaks into us and our ears are open and we understand we are recreated. We are made new. We are transformed. We are different, and we are accountable to that difference. We're not under the laws. We don't work our, our own righteousness so that we, so that we earn our, our way into the kingdom of heaven. But instead, God loves us first, transforms us first, and then we live out that life that he's made for us. Ephesians is fairly clear in that. That salvation is a free gift, not from works, so that we don't boast about what we did to make ourselves uh, righteous and right for God, but that God gives it to us freely. But then it goes on in verse 9 to say, He gives us the salvation so that we can do the good works that have been set before us as a way of life. See, our life, the way our life is lived becomes completely different when our ears are open. Jesus is the antidote that we need to take for a world that is dying. Dying with poison that is poisoning our souls, our spirituality. But not only do we need to take it as in take it ourselves, but we need to take this antidote and carry it out to the world. We need to be the ones who share this vision with the world that needs to be transformed. We are called to make disciples. The body of Christ is not just simply here to meet and, and get our own needs met, but we're here to be equipped so that we can go out into the world and do the ministry that is set before us. The ministry of making disciples. I said I was going to talk a little bit about El Rande, and I'm not going to talk a lot about it, but that's an opportunity that we have to take this antidote, to, to talk to people about our faith, to at least let them know that this is a place that loves them and, and wants people to come in and, and, and to begin to wrestle with issues that, that they struggle with in the light of the one who can transform them, the one who can rescue them, the one who can save them, the one who can give purpose and meaning in life, the one that can help when life is shattered and falling apart and You've lost a, a loved one, one that can be there and, and support you through your crisis. 
we become the hands and the feet of the body of Christ, taking that antidote into the world, it's an opportunity to serve. We're going to have communion later on in the service, and, and I'm going to talk more about this then, but communion this Sunday, and, and uh, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and, and, and probably every Sunday hereafter, it is really going to be an opportunity for an altar call and for healing. Um, it really is anyway, but we really haven't talked about that a lot, focused on that much. But when we get up and come forward to receive the elements, it's the opportunity that, that we receive Jesus Christ in our lives, maybe for the first time. Certainly if you have received them before, it's the opportunity that we are refilled again. We're going to talk about that concept. But it's also when we have taken the bread, we've taken the cup, and been filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that we have something that overflows us into the world. Why do people need Jesus? The world is broken. The world needs its ears unstopped, and we need our tongues loosened so that we can speak that word into the community, so that we can be the body.